Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be discussing defining roads and paths using Kubelcube Professional. Unfortunately you can't follow the steps in Kubelcube Lite because we'll be making use of the path and the feature surface uh, which are both only available in the professional version. Okay so we're going to start with this project that we've previously defined the existing and brought in and scaled a site plan. If you're ever unsure of the scale of a project, it's always worth checking a known length using the measure tool. So pressing M and dragging across, we can see this one's been scaled correctly. It's always worth doing before doing the proposed because if you do the proposed and the scale's wrong, cut and fill estimates will also be wrong. We're going to be looking at three different scenarios for defining roads and paths. The first one is a simple path that you would have for a footpath or a bicycle path. Second two are going to be more complex scenarios that you would find with roads used by cars. We'll start with the footpath that we have here around a cricket pitch and for that we are going to be using the path element which allows you to define a centre line and then for each point that you place uh, you can set either an elevation or a height and depth so in this example, we're not going to be using elevations. Uh, we're going to be setting the path to be 200 millimeters just below the existing ground. So to finish, you just uh, right click. So on the right here, once you've created the path, you will see the path's properties. And the first thing that you can set is the width. So on the plan, we can use the quick measure tool again by pressing M and holding it down to find that the path is roughly about five meters wide. So we can set that here. So we'll set the path to be five meters. The path's elevations have just been set as a default sampled off the existing ground. And they've been set to elevations or levels. Um, you can see it says defined by levels here. So because we want to set it by depths, we're going to change that to heights. And you'll notice that the default height is one and we want to actually set a depth. So what we need to do is add in a negative value in here and we're going to be using negative minus 0 0.2 because it's 200 millimeters just below uh, the ground. So I'm going to copy and paste that using control C. Uh, I copied and then control V to paste into all the other boxes. Okay, so there we have a road set to five meters width and with a minus 0 0.2 meters height, which translates to 200 millimeters cut along the center line. Another thing to consider is the side batter. So that's the, the side slopes up to the ground, which by default is set to one in one. And we can set that to sort of a shallower slope if we want. So I can experiment by putting one in three um, and get a slightly gentler slope along the sides. So once that's done, that, that's all there is to defining paths. Okay, so we'll just take a look at that path in 3D and it, it is exactly what we want, the footpath but 200 millimeters below the ground around the sports pitch. Now at this stage you might wonder why we can't use this technique for defining all our roads and you can although there are some problems with it. First of all the width is consistent across the whole path so you couldn't have the the road get thicker at a certain section. You could by defining multiple paths but it might not get a smooth join between the two. The other thing is that paths generate a, a flat surface on their cross section. So if we use the measure here to do a cross section across, we'll, we'll see that um, this is always flat on a path. Now, for your roads, you might want a camber on the road or quite often you want a drop off from the center line. Uh, so in that situation, the path isn't adequate. So what we recommend is using the feature surface, which is often used for creating complex geometry that can't be defined easily with these other elements. Uh, so on the next two scenarios, we'll be moving on to use the feature surface. Okay, the next scenario we're gonna look at is one in which you have your perimeter of your road defined, but without any elevation, and you have elevations in the interior. Now this could be either spot levels like this, or maybe you would have a brake line for or a line for the center of the road, 
or sometimes a combination of a few different things. You can even have control lines. So in that case, uh, what we need to use is the feature surface and the extrapolate outline feature. So I just go add feature surface. And so what we usually start with is building the outline. So there's a various outline options uh, available and there's a separate video on that. One where you can specify a fixed level outline, one you can specify varying levels or just snap it to the ground level. In this case, we're going to use the extrapolate one, which you don't set any elevations on it, um, but it takes its elevations from the interior. So in this case, that's appropriate because we've just got spots for some heights along the road and then we've got the perimeter, but it doesn't actually say what the perimeter elevations are. So one thing that you can do with outlines is you can punch out holes in an outline. So you can see in this road layout, what we need to do is define the outside and then punch out one, two, three areas from it. So I'll just start doing that. So now I've finished with doing the outer perimeter of the road layout. Now I'm going to punch out the three regions, one, two, three. And I do that by just adding three more extrapolate outlines. So the outer one was an extrapolate outline and there's going to be three others. And then the whole road perimeter is set to extrapolate from the points inside. Okay, so now we're on the last sort of punch out and it's worth going over some of the controls. So you basically set the points with left click and then when you're ready to finish, you can do a right click. If you make a mistake and want to go back a step, you can actually press the backspace key. So I've just gone back two steps there and then I've clicked on to redo them. So that's really useful, especially when you've got very complex outlines to do. So when you're finished and you've set your last point, you just right click and you can enter a name. Now you don't have to enter a tag or name. So in this case, I'm not going to, but you can if it helps you identify group. Okay, so we've now finished the boundary outlines uh, for this road. So we're ready to start taking off the elevations in the interior, which this case in this site plan is, is specified by uh, points. So for that, we click on the points list we're not importing them from a file, but it's worth noting that you can import them from a CAD file or a point file or spreadsheet if you do have them. But we're gonna, in this example, take them off from the site plan. So we go add points and we start by just clicking there and that one's at 102.67. And we go next, 102.60. And then we do this for all the points on the plan. So now we've taken off all the points, it's worth pointing out that the feature surface ignores any elevations outside of the boundary outlines. So these points need to have a relevance in the feature surface, they need to be inside the boundary outline. So sometimes if on the plan someone has put a point slightly outside, it's worth dragging it in if the intention is, it, is for it to be the elevation of the road. Um, so, okay, I've done all the points, so now we're ready to click OK and they will be triangulated.
So there we have the road defined with points and an extrapolate outline. There's one thing to consider again, which is the side batters. Uh, so we're, I'm going to leave them at one and one because that seems reasonable for this road layout. So next we go on to the last scenario, which is what we recommend people do when they're defining roads in their projects. Okay, in this next scenario, we're going to be looking at site plans where the road perimeter has been defined with explicit elevation. So they've, the elevations of the road perimeter are actually marked on the plan. Optionally, you can sometimes find that there's also a center line with elevations marked. That's not always the case. Sometimes you might just have the perimeter elevations marked. But a lot of roads, as they have a profile to accommodate for drainage, they, they do have this. So we're going to look at taking off first the perimeter and then in case you also have a center line, we'll do the center line as well. So like the last scenario, we'll be using the feature surface for this. But unlike that one where we were using the extrapolate outline because we didn't know the elevations on the perimeter, we want them to be calculated from internal elevations. On this one, we do know the elevation, so we're going to be using the varying levels outline, which allows us to type in the levels. Um, so I'll start up here and type in the first elevation that's marked on the plan, which is 103.63 meters. Now, for these points where I don't know the elevation, because the next one's marked here, but I can't go straight there, I have to add in this curve. I can just leave them blank. So it says here, type level or leave blank to interpolate from adjacent points. So I can just press enter or click continue. And just, I can keep going there for all those points that I'm adding that I don't know the elevation of. And now when I do know an elevation, I'll type that in. So that's 104.46. Click continue and do the same for the next point. And then there's one I do know, so 103. 0.97. So we'll carry it along around the whole road. Okay, so that's the outside perimeter done. As you can see in this list of points here, where I've not entered the points elevation, it says not set. So that's not a problem. That just means these points are interpolated from these two based on distance. So yeah, next what we need to do is, just like in the previous example, punch out these three areas with additional outlines. And in this case, the interior uh, boundaries do also have uh, elevations marked, so we'll be using a varying levels outline again. So I'll just start with that now. Okay, so that's the uh, boundary outline finished with four varying level outlines. So before putting in the center line, which we will do next, I'm going to just 
click OK to see how that looks in 3D. So it looks uh, fine in 3D and in some site plans that's all you'll be able to do because you only have the elevations marked on the perimeter. But sometimes you might either know that there's a centre line that's raised a certain amount of distance or you actually have a centre line marked on the plan like in this case. So what you need to do for the centre line is actually enter a break line. Um, so we click on edit and I click on the breaks list and then I'm going to add in a break line. So one thing to know about this is you're entering in the same fashion as we were entering in the varying levels outline. Okay, so I'll get started with that. This is a situation that you often find uh, where the break line comes to the end of the outline. Uh, this is true of contour lines as well, where you see a contour line stop at the end of the boundary. In this case, it's best to have the break line or contour line go slightly over the edge of the outline rather than it be slightly shy of it. So I'm going to start just over the edge of the outline and then enter in my next elevation and carry on from there. Okay, so that is the center line done. Um, so we've got now in this feature surface, we've got our outlines with the varying level outlines and then the brake lines to define the road. So we'll click OK to see what that looks like in 3D. And there you go. So to demonstrate the concept of the center line raising the middle of the road up slightly, And then we can view it to make sure it is working how we expect it. And as you can see, uh, perimeter of the road that we've defined is slightly lower than the center, which we defined with the brake line. And then, and then you get this drop off to the side of the road, which is what we expected. So that brings to the end this video. I hope it was useful. Uh, if there's any questions, please post in the comments or get in touch on our forums, which are www.forums.kublasoftware.com.